Flying a plane when once in the air is the easiest part of flying. Next easiest is taking off. Landing is the hardest of all. It is customary before landing at an airport to circle the field at least once, always to the left, to look the place over and see that no other pilot is about to take off, to give other pilots a chance to see that you are going to land, and to look at the wind suck and see which way the wind is blowing. Remember always to land upwind, that is, against the wind. As you look at the wind suck, think, I must land in this direction. Briefly, the steps in landing are as follows. On approaching the landing field, close the throttle to shut off most of the power. Nose down and let the plane glide toward the field. When nearly down, gradually level off, so you will be flying level when a few feet above the ground. Hold the plane a little above ground while the plane loses flying speed and gradually lower the tail. When the landing attitude is reached, let the plane skim along till it loses flying speed and sinks to the ground. Now let us watch a real plane do a complete landing. You will learn by experience how to judge the right moment as you approach a landing field when you should start the glide. When ready to do so, close the throttle and point the nose slightly downward into the gliding attitude. The engine will idle. It will not stop entirely. The plane will glide down at a slight angle propelled by gravity. When approaching a landing field, it is important to remember that a plane will stall when gliding just as easily as when flying, or more so, unless the necessary speed is kept up. You must be very careful, therefore, to keep the nose of the plane pointing down. If you lift the nose too high in the glide, the plane will lose flying speed and may stall before you realize what has happened. Here is an example in real flight of what happens if you fly too nearly level in a glide. The plane stalls. Fortunately, this pilot is high enough to level off and not strike the ground. In light plane, 60 miles an hour is a good gliding speed for the purpose of landing. This is the airspeed indicator on the instrument board in front of the cockpit. It shows how fast you are moving through the air. It reads 50 miles an hour. The pilot will push the nose down a little so the plane will gain speed until the indicator reads 60. In a glide, it is sometimes necessary to make a turn. Banking, yawing, and pitching are all done in the same way in a glide as in power flight, but with the greater motion of the stick and pedals. Here is the reason. When a propeller is forced to turn rapidly by the engine, it forces a strong current of air backward past the airplane. In a glide, when the propeller is only idling, that is, turning slowly, this strong backwash, as we call it, is absent. So the rush of air past the control surfaces is less than in power flight. That is why in a glide, it takes more motion of the stick and pedals to produce the same effect as in power flight. As we said earlier, when the plane is at the proper height above ground, the pilot must begin to lift the nose so the plane will be flying level when slightly above ground. While skimming along a little above ground with power off, the plane is gradually losing speed and approaching the stalling point. 
we try to hold it off the ground as long as possible in order to land it slowly. To do so, we must tilt the plane more and more by lowering the tail. This is done at just the rate necessary to hold the plane above the ground. The angle at which the plane stands on the ground is called the landing attitude. When the plane is tilted up to this angle, we no longer lower the tail, but let the plane stall and sink to the ground, landing on all three wheels. This is called a three-point landing. Of course, we have to learn just when to start leveling the plane. If we start leveling the plane too late, it dives into the ground and bumps the landing gear. This causes the plane to bounce, and it is then difficult to control. If we start leveling too soon and level off too high above ground, the plane eventually stalls too high and falls to the ground with a plop. To land the plane properly takes much practice, and even then we must give our entire attention to it. Here is a student pilot about to land. He does not level off soon enough. The front wheels strike the ground too early, and the plane bounces, making it difficult for the pilot to regain control. Another thing to remember about landing is that when the plane has finally settled to the ground, you must immediately pull the stick all the way back and hold it back. This holds the tail down and avoids any tendency of the plane to nose over while taxiing to a stop. Here is what you see from the cockpit as we make a correct landing. <laughs> 